In this lecture, we will explore why our modern lives appear meaningless. In this lecture, we will think about the greatest question which faces all of us. What do our lives mean? Let's start with a thought experiment. Suppose we had a genie who could grant us any kind of knowledge that we wanted. What kind of knowledge would we ask for? Maybe the secret to becoming rich or the secret of finding love in our lives. Some might be attracted to power. Economic theory teaches us that life is all about maximizing the pleasure. But what if these are all illusions? If the Midas touch only brings social isolation, what if pleasure leads to empty lives? And what if our pursuit of love does not lead to happiness, but to tragedy? And what if a search for power isolates us? Maybe we should learn to ask better questions from our genie. What if happiness lies within us, not in our external circumstances? The important questions would be, who am I? And more, what could I become? What are the potentials within me that I would develop? If I could choose to be whatever is possible for me, which of my selves would I ask for? How can I live the good life, making the best possible use of the precious few moments that I have been granted. Maybe this genie is more useful than we thought. We might have wished for palaces and power, but the genie gives us knowledge and maybe that's more important than all of the things that we would want on first sight. Maybe we need to relearn some ancient forgotten wisdom. An ancient source from 14 centuries ago informs us that knowledge is the greatest treasure. So Socrates taught that self-knowledge is the beginning of wisdom. And ancients considered that an unexamined life is not worth living. Lao Tzu taught that we should not chase after wealth or power or even fame, recognition, approval of people. All of the things that seem like powerful, popular goals today. So how did it come to pass that all of this ancient wisdom was forgotten. How could we forget the most important questions of life? In this introductory lecture, we only aim to raise the question and not to provide the answer. And we will explore one possible path to the solution of this mystery of how the meaning of life was forgotten. We have all heard how stodgy, superstitious, traditional societies were transformed to the marvels of modernity but we haven't learned about how this brought about meaningless in our lives. Instead of talking about meaning, modern philosophers talk about meaninglessness. Existential philosophers inform us authoritatively that there is no meaning to life. Kierkegaard tells us that anxiety arises from having to make choices which appear to be serious, but all of them are equally meaningless. Dark and pessimistic views arise from contemplating the meaninglessness of our modern lives. If life really is meaningless, then the ultimate question arises, is it worth living such a meaningless life? So the question for us is, how did we get here? How did we get from a place where every single smallest event was loaded with meaning to where the entire life is meaningless and even the question of meaning cannot be understood one possible answer to these questions can be deduced from a book by Julie Rubin called The Making of the Modern University. We, before we discuss the book, let's put it in context and understand the central role that universities play in the forming a culture and a civilization. In essence, universities are the brains of the society. Universities are the collected storehouses of knowledge. Knowledge is accumulated for thousands of years with hundreds of thousands, millions of scholars. So a university must select a very small portion and prioritize some kinds of knowledge over others. 
the portion of knowledge which is selected to be passed on shapes the minds of our youth and the future of the society the conception of what kind of knowledge is important and which kind is not has changed radically over time the central narrative of this book is that the conception of knowledge changed radically in the early 20th century and this uh, modern universities are based on this new concept of knowledge which excludes morality the book explains how in the 19th century intellectuals believed that truth was spiritual moral cognitive all dimensions are part of the same truth the unity of truth was due to the divine nature of knowledge the all of the universe is the creation of god so all knowledge about it should be unified and harmonious and our study of it would lead to recognition of god and it would lead to a good life in the sense that we would use the knowledge to be able to act well to safeguard our happiness and that of others so all of the united uh, knowledge was united in purpose but this harmonious conception of knowledge was shattered in the early 20th century logical positivist argued that science and morality were radically separated of different kinds and that while science did lead to knowledge moral statements were just noise meaningless this conception of knowledge had a profound impact on universities where science and technology got elevated to the status of knowledge and ancient questions concerns about philosophy and meaning got relegated to the dustbin and removed from the university syllabus so according to this narrative logical positivism elevated the knowledge of our external surroundings to be science and knowledge and our internal knowledge of our states our feelings our emotions intuitions our souls and spirituality this was all subjective and therefore not even part of knowledge so if meanings lie inside us and what's inside was excluded from the realm of knowledge it stands to reason that meaning was lost now this is just one narrative and it has some strengths and some weaknesses and it raises more questions than it answers some of the questions that it raises will be uh, discussed in the next few slides so we have painted logical positivism as the arch villain in this story but is this philosophy really suited for this role it's very strange to say that a cry of pain is meaningless when it is part of a universal language easily understood and immediately responded to why does logical positivism consider it meaningless doesn't this discredit the philosophy itself this is just one of many obvious flaws in the philosophy which even its uh, most ardent proponents saw and they eventually rejected it so how did this flawed philosophy become so influential in shaping modern thought logical positivism collapsed in the 1970s so the question is why hasn't a new more holistic philosophy emerged in the 50 years which followed now that logical positivism has been abandoned at least officially how can we rebuild an epistemological framework which allows us to consider these central questions about our lives this story seems highly oversimplified because we have taken one of the central questions of our existence and reduced it to one philosophy being having destroyed meaning so obviously we need to add some factors and depth and complexity to this narrative this was just an introduction but puts a skeleton in place the flesh and the blood and the nerves and other parts must be added to make this a credible story and we hope to do that later